Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna start right where we left off last video. We leak tested the coolant system and we found a leak. So we have here, we've taken the heads off the block. We've blocked off half of the head. So theoretically, if I put pressurized air on this side, we shouldn't hear a thing. Let me try this here. But as you can see, So we have a leak and now the task is to figure out where the leak is coming from and how to fix it. And we think we know where the leak is coming from. So we have here uh, some of the leftover halves of the heads after we cut them off. And we want to kind of show you what we did and where we think the leak, actually where we know the leak is coming from. Uh, and if you haven't watched this video, this was probably eight videos ago, so you should go check that out. But in order to block off the water passages, right? when we welded the heads, we knew we weren't going to be able to weld inside here. So what we wanted to do was isolate the water from the oil. And what we decided to do was to make plates to block off the water passages on each half of the heads. The problem is that when we went to weld the heads together, if you can imagine there's welds on either side the beads were so tall that we weren't able to get the heads close to where we needed them to be, right? They, they wouldn't sit flush. So we decided to grind these down. And when we did that, we created small hairline cracks and we let any air bubbles come out through the wells, any imperfections. And that's where the air is coming from. What we're going to do now is try and find a way to essentially block off this entire section of the head. So obviously we can't fix this because it's fully welded and it's not worth it for us to take these apart or start over. Uh, we've already done way too much work on them and there may be other things that could go wrong. So we just wanna take these through the whole process, get it started and see what else needs to be fixed at the end. So what we've decided to do instead is we're going to pull vacuum from the bolt holes and we're going to pour epoxy through the passages on the head on the underside of the head and try and pull epoxy through any gaps in the plates essentially filling whatever air gap is in between the two heads in this area is going to get fully filled with epoxy and that should seal the water completely from the oil and we shouldn't have any more leaks. So when we welded the heads together, there were some areas of the heads that we couldn't get to with the welders, so we left those open, and it's all these tight corners. Since the water pockets were sealed with the plates, there was no risk of water seeping in through the head and mixing with oil, so those areas being open wasn't an issue. However, obviously with the leak being there, we couldn't do that anymore, and in order to pull vacuum, we needed to make sure all of this was properly sealed. So what we decided to do was fill any of the unwelded areas with JB Weld. So you can see here, we've already done that. And in order to make sure that this was properly sealing along any of the open areas, we pulled vacuum from under the head and that pulled any JB Weld into the gap that was uh, in between the two heads from the top. And now we know the top side is fully sealed and we can pull vacuum no problem. So what we're going to be using for this is this two-part epoxy. This is Max Gasoline Resistant Epoxy by the Epoxy Experts. Uh, we got this from Amazon, but we got this specifically because it's oil and gas resistant and it's also a high temperature epoxy. So it takes about three to five days to fully cure. Um, but before we use this on our actual heads, we're actually going to be using a practice piece. So We've taped off the uh, water ports here. This simulates our plates, essentially. And what we're going to be doing is we're gonna flip this over. We're gonna mix the epoxy, and we're gonna be filling the water holes here. And we're gonna let that cure for about 24 hours. 
rip off the tape, see what the epoxy looks like, make sure it's properly sealed. We might actually pressurize this half just to make sure it holds pressure. And if all that works great, then we're gonna move on to our actual heads. All right, so we got about 15 milliliters in each half or each side here. Um, so we'll come back tomorrow and see what it looks like. All right, so one day has gone by. Let's see how it looks. It's supposed to set for four to five days, but it hardens within the first 24 hours. So let's just take a look. Um, we're planning to put water in and see if it leaks and then possibly try to heat it up. Let's just that's full. Where's my leaks for the seals? Should we put some pressure in or should we wait till it dries? <sighs> We're gonna put pressure. Go. This thing's like about to pop off. You see it? Oh, yeah. It's still sealed though. Oh, there's water leaking from the plate, but not from the. It's not leaking from the caps though. So we know it seals. That's good. But uh, we, earlier we took a heat gun to a small piece we dumped on like a crevice and it softened up right away. So uh, I think what we're going to do is wait for it to fully cure, maybe two more days. Then we're going to put this head in the oven take it up to like 250 and see if it holds up three days later so we're back and this is fully cured it has been four days since we put this in so this should be as good as it's going to get our plan is to stick this in the oven so we got the oven heating up to 230 degrees we're going to throw these 230 degrees fahrenheit that is we're going to throw this in there wait an hour or so make sure it gets the whole head up to temperature Pull it out and put pressure and see what it uh, what it does. Oh boy! Oh, that's, that's hot. Oh yeah, you can see it in there. It's definitely boiling. This is 30 PS. So a little, a little more kick. I'm gonna stand away from it there, yeah. just in case it blows up. Right? That's it? That's it. Very anti <laughs> All right, so that's, epoxy is holding up, high pressure, high temperature. So I think we're ready to, uh, we're ready to move on to the actual heads. Successful test. All right, so this is the setup we're gonna to use to get the epoxy in there. Originally, we were planning to just syringe it in there, let it seep in and harden and call it good. But uh, as we were thinking about it, and a lot of you commented on the last video about making a vacuum setup so we could suck it in. So this is what we got. We got this uh, little vacuum pump, um, some medical type of vacuum pump that we had. Um, and we got, so the plan is to put in uh, the epoxy on one side, then the other side is blocked off. We used some of this rubber, as you guys saw in a couple other tests, uh, that got burnt. Um, but the rubber will be sealing half of the head. We'll be pulling vacuum from one half of the head as well as the two bolt holes. So we epoxy or JB weld the top of the seam. So that could give us a sealing here. And then we're actually vacuuming on two of the holes so we're pulling the vacuum on uh, those holes where the cut is, and that should help draw the any epoxy through the gap between the two cylinder heads and really seal up everything we can. So um, we already got it all cleaned up. We ran some uh, acetone through this, tell it, you know, ran through the system, got everything clean. 
Now we're gonna mix up the epoxy, put it in there, suck it down, and everything should be good after that. So let's do it. All right, so it's day five. The heads or the epoxy is fully cured by now. We're uh, doing a little bit of a leak test now. Jack is setting up the heads here, so what's the plan? Well, we're gonna block off every side, fill it with air, 20 PSI or something of air, and then uh, pour some bubbles or some bubbly solution on the- uh, Soapy water. Yeah, soapy water. <laughs> soapy water on the uh, other side where the oil uh, chamber is yeah, and then here. we'll see if we see any Yeah, if we bubbles. see any bubbles through this bolt hole, then we know that epoxy didn't work. So far, so good. One out of four. All right, so one other thing that, if you guys remember last video, we saw the freeze plug on the driver's side head was leaking and it's still leaking. So we're gonna have to tap it in a couple more times. Hopefully that seals it. It's not, if not, we'll have to remove it and put a new I one in I think we there. just put a new one. Yeah, that might be the better thing, so. All right, so we decided to just replace the uh, freeze plug. We didn't want to mess around with pressing it back on or whatever, so. There's a little bit of soapy water over it, so hopefully no more leaks. And that looks good. Easy peasy. All right. And just to be sure, we're going to do the same check with every every head. The other ones didn't leak. That was the only one, but we're already here, so. All right, last half. If this works, we're ready to... Send us your heads with a hole in it. We'll epoxy patch it. <laughs> Here we go. That's as sealed as it's going to get. Let's test the uh, freeze plug. All right. I think that does it for epoxy. So epoxy works if you want to seal your welded well, heads. Well, hold on, wait, we gotta heat cycle it a couple of times before we it work. start selling. I mean, we baked it on the oven for how long? 20, 30 minutes? All right, so that does it for the heads. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, what's the So next? we're gonna, now we're gonna Assemble? start, yeah, right. we're gonna start, we're gonna clean them one more time and throw the valves, springs. We're gonna assemble the heads, get them ready for when we get the camps, we can just, Throw them on the heads, right on the block, and get that started. So, time to assemble the heads. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Finally got the cores. So, it's good. we're going to take these back to the garage and open the box over there. Master of delivery. It's finally here. Months and months of waiting. Let's open it up, see what they look like. All the tape. Yep. 
they literally taped the whole box. So not the best kind of packaging for it. Not the best box. Can't chefs, to be honest, but uh, oh, there's a couple in here. Yeah. We ended up getting two sets worth of camshafts. So there's seven here. We got one a couple of weeks ago, or a month ago actually. So total of eight camshafts. Um, so we have enough to build two. Yeah. I mean, these were custom made. So in case one of them got broken or if anything went wrong, we decided it's not worth waiting for another set. So now we have an extra set just in case we- Or if we, we want to tune- Tune it up a little bit. Parameters. Yeah, so we have some extra ones to play around with. Should look exactly the same. Yep. These are all the spools of the round bulbs. All right, here they are, all eight. So now they're ready to be shipped off. So yeah, we gotta call up Bullet, finally tell them they're coming, get all the specs and everything, all the details they need to get these ground to our requirements. And whoa, this is this is the last piece, right? Yeah, this is the yeah. biggest piece, but it is the last piece mm -hmm. to get this thing yeah. going. So it's finally time to put the heads together for hopefully the last time. We got all the parts laid out, cleaned them all up in mineral spirits. The heads laid out, all the plugs are in for the oil passages, so this thing's ready to go. We got a little bit of our uh, this assembly mixture. This is, seems what people use to put on their um, the valve, so on startup it doesn't gall anything up. It's just half of uh, oil treatment and half of your engine oil 530. Um, so we'll be assembling everything together. And these things will be going on the block for probably the down. last time. Yeah, for the leak down test and that's it. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the last crossed. time. So let's go ahead and get started putting this thing together for the last time. We're just using a piece of straw to protect the valve seal from the valve. All right, so we got all our valves in, all the seals in, everything's lubed up, springs are all installed. So this is it for the valve train. All we need now is our camshafts and the valve train will be done. So we're gonna bolt these back onto the block for hopefully the last time. And we're gonna do a cylinder leak down on all 10 cylinders. All right, so we got our leak down tester in from Amazon. This is just the cheap one that they have. Um, we'll see how good it works, but there's really two ways to do a compression test or make sure that the cylinder is not you know, losing air from uh, some leak. So we could do a compression test which requires a starter to spin the engine and it naturally builds the pressure and you measure that. That's a compression tester. This is a leak down tester. This takes an air source from a compressor and then it pumps the air into the cylinder. So for this, you'll put in like 100 PSI. You set it to 100 PSI and then it measures how much leak goes past the, you could have a leak at the rings. You could have a leak at the valve seals. Um, for us, we're also trying to see that we don't have a leak on the head surfaces where we welded or any gasket leaks. So we're gonna be checking how much it does leak. You can see here that they give you kind of an indication of range between four or lower than 40 should be good. We have a new engine, so I'm expecting no leak by the valves. If there's no leak on the head gasket surfaces, we might have some leak by the rings because the rings haven't been seated. We haven't run the engine obviously yet, but I'm still expecting, I'm hoping for like 10%. So 10% should be 
ideal for us if we could hit that. Um, but we're going to go ahead and connect this up, put pressure in, and go through all of them and see how much leak down we actually have. All right, so we got the leak down tester. The first step is going to be hooking it up to the air source. And then we're going to set the pressure to show 100 and 0 on both the gauges before we plug it in. So we'll set this. So that's 100, that's, that's close to zero, that's almost zero. And we're gonna go ahead and connect that to the cylinder, which you can't see back there. So this Amazon one, it leaks here, so Diego has to hold that while I show you this. So we're still at 100, and we only have like 5% of leak down, so that's really good. That's so that's really good. Cylinder one, let's keep going. Another point, we don't have to set this thing on top dead center since we don't have any cams in there. It just pushes the cylinder to bottom dead center and then we measure the pressure there but the valves are closed so it doesn't matter. All right, this is the last one. Yeah, less than 5%. All right, so they all are, I mean, all pretty close. They're all less than 5%. I didn't get accurate enough to uh, measure 1% and 2%. They're all less than that one line there. So we, uh, everything looks good. All right, so we got the leak down test out of the way. All the cylinders are showing good numbers. So we're going to move on to doing the final leak test. So we're going to bolt the cooling system back up and uh, get that done one last time, hopefully. The final time, no leaks this time, guaranteed. All right, so we got the system filled up, you can hear it. So this time we put in, we have some faith, so we put in uh, antifreeze a little bit so that way we don't have any rust issues or anything when it sits with the water in there. We were uh, uh, multi-purposing our uh, leak down tester so we set it to 16 15 16 psi so moment of truth dry from the lines you remember last video it was leaking from you know the the heads nothing on this side nothing on this side uh, and how about the because we fixed one of the I mean we already tested everything on the bench this, yeah this, the this freeze, plugs, yeah, freeze leaks. plugs how about the block freeze plug nothing back here nothing from here and Nothing here. Front ones here in the timing cover. Oh, I just saw a drip of water. Oh, it's goddamn AMA. line. All right, so we got a little leak here. We're gonna tighten that up a little bit more, and then. How about, how about the freeze plugs on the front? Yeah, no, nothing. Nothing in the front. Yeah, it's all dry. All right, so the only leak we have is a in fitting, which all right, that's an easy fix. Nothing on the heads though. No, we do have a leak from that uh, sensor. You just leaking from there? Yeah, you see the drip coming out. Okay, yeah, so the sensor is also leaking. I just gotta put some more. Yeah, but those are all very small details. So let's fix that really quick. We'll test it again just to please uh, Jax. OCD. And uh, let's do that. So we've had the system pressurized for a couple minutes. We just tightened up that sensor and the AN line and we don't see any leaks there. So I think we have success. You know what we like more than not having leaks though? Getting feedback from you guys. So if you like this content, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, let us know what you think, good or bad. We like to hear both. All right, so let's walk through the alternator uh, relocation bracket. So. We said before that because this uh, coolant manifold and the intake
took up the space of where the stock alternator was. We were going to relocate it, and we have a couple constraints that we worked around to get that done. So one was the AC compressor. We want to keep this. We want the vehicle. This is going in to have AC. So that was a constraint. We couldn't move it down here. The second constraint was that we had already worked on the thermostat housing. So we didn't want to touch this. Uh, we wanted to work around this with the alternator bracket. So really the only spot that left was the space where the stock uh, steering pump goes. So it, go, it mounts right here on the head. The vehicle this engine is going in comes with electric steering. So we won't be needing the hydraulic steering pump. So we're throwing that in the trash and we're using that location to mount our alternator. We also decided to go with a 3G alternator. So the stock alternator mounts sort of perpendicular to the plane of the pulley. This one has the mounts on the same plane. Uh, that just made it a little easier to package and it was a little more compact. So the first iteration of the bracket was something we just designed in CAD and 3D printed. The problem with this bracket is that um, we were trying to mount the alternator as low as possible and when we did that we realized that you know when the alternator you can imagine it, it mounts here it would interfere with the thermostat housing so again we didn't want to touch this we're happy with where this goes so we decided to move the alternator up higher uh, relative to the engine and we also needed to modify the back end here because uh, as you can see you can't just have a mount a flat plane here this would interfere here so we had to redesign the back end as well. So then we went with this second iteration and then I forgot to redesign the back so we had to cut it with the angle grinder. But when we do this now and we mount this to the engine, you can see that it sits much higher. Um, and when we mount it on this bracket, we barely clear the thermostat housing. I think we're like five mils or so away, which is just perfect. So we were happy with this design. We could have spent the time to mill this ourselves but we decided that we had other stuff to worry about instead. So we had a machine shop mach machine this for us and we have it back now. So let me show you what it looks like. Here's the final design. We redesigned the back to have standoffs. Like I said, we couldn't have a flat plane and the front pretty much looks identical to the 3D printed part. So it came out pretty good. We got it back in a couple of weeks. So it worked out fairly, fairly well for us. So let's go ahead and mount it on the engine. We'll throw the alternator on it and we'll show you what it looks like. All right, let's throw the alternator on. All right, so here we have it. Alternator is mounted, the bracket is mounted on the engine. The pulley lines up as it should be, and it came out pretty well. Like I said, we, we have, we can see here, we have five millimeters or so of clearance. Um, we're, we're happy with that. None of that is actually moving. Um, we still haven't decided if we might cut this back and move it a little bit, but it works. With this being done, the next step was figuring out the serpentine belt routing. One of the issues we ran into is that, as you can see here, when you route the belt through the tensioner, and because we wanted to keep the AC compressor, we now needed a way to get the, the belt from this pulley over to the other side. And stock in the stock form, you have your alternator pulley here. That's how you guide it through. Obviously, we don't have that. So what we've decided to do is to make uh, bracket and add uh, a fourth idler pulley in this location to help us route the belt. So let me grab it here. We already worked on it. So what we decided to do was actually take the old uh, tensioner, the old tensioner, and we cut it off and we're using this interface to mount our idler pulley. Now this is a smooth idler pulley. We actually need a rib but we don't have it yet, so we're just using this for um, packaging purposes. We're planning on reusing this one bolt or share this one bolt for the uh, coolant manifold on, these, uh, on this idler pulley. So we machined this so that it fits in the back. The plan is to actually cut off this ear on the bracket. And when this is mounted, we're going to be able to then tag this to this spacer. So this will become part of the coolant manifold bracket. So let me show you what that looks like. Let me move this out of the way. So when we mount this here, all right, so this is bolted here. You can see we're gonna weld this to the timing cover. That's gonna become fixed. That then also the spacer helps us align the pulley to the rest of the pulleys. The next step is uh, figure out what length we need. We're not gonna be using the stock belt. 
So we're just gonna grab some rope or some uh, convolute we have, route it where it needs to go around the pulleys, and we'll probably run to the store, get it. And once we have the right pulley, this belt system will be complete and we can move on to the next thing. So let's go ahead and weld this to the timing cover, mount this the way it should be, and measure the length of the belt. Burned all our uh, epoxy finish or work with tea. In order to get the right belt, we took some electrical convolute that we had laying around that looked like a belt. We wrapped it around and we marked the length we needed. All right, so we got our belt in. This is actually the third one because uh, we kept getting too short of uh, belts. So hopefully third time's the charm. Let's pause it in the engine and make sure everything works. We, uh, we changed this pulley to the rip one, like we said, so that's good to go. And uh, we didn't mention this last time, but the harmonic balancer is backwards. So we just put it in this way just for testing. We don't want to press it in right now. So let's uh, get this on the engine. Yeah, if you look, the tensioner is within the range it's supposed to be. So that's good. That means we got the right length. Routing it around here is pretty uh, tight change, but that should be okay. And then this does get close. If this we see this becoming an issue, we could change the this to a smaller diameter, and it will clear. Uh, and then the alternator is out here, and everything looks okay. All right, so that'll be it for the alternator, the belt. We got all that done, so that's good. Uh, we're also working on wiring, but we still have quite a bit to go on it. So we'll show you guys that next video. For now, let's go back to the list and cross off everything we got done in this video. All right, so let's cross off the stuff we got done this video. Our uh, list here is on his last leg, so I'm gonna give it a help with my hand. So really the most important thing we got done in this video is fix the leak. So we got that done. The coiling system is 100% at this point, so that's good. We finished the alternator bracket, so we're getting that done. We assembled the heads like 80%, we're still waiting on cams obviously, so we haven't fully assembled them. So that'll get done when we get the cams back and that will we'll degree the cams at the same time to time the engine at that point. So we'll leave that there. We're working through the electrical hardness, so that'll be next video. Um, we still have to figure out the exhaust. Uh, that'll just be just started on the engine. We're not actually gonna do any headers. It's just gonna be most likely getting the two valve V10 uh, exhaust manifold to work. So we'll figure that out next video probably. Yeah, we have a lot of things to do, but really the big thing is the camps. So we shipped them off to Bullet. They're at Bullet now, hopefully getting ground soon. Uh, so we'll, we'll, make a, we'll make that video when we get the camps back, but uh, that'll be it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.